Remind people as well in the lowland coastal communities that, you know, they need to be cognizant of tsunamis, possibly tsunamis. So uh, if you're in those areas, you know, we ask folks that, you know, uh, when they participate in the drill on 1020 at 1020 mm -hmm. uh, to identify some of your evacuation routes and assembly sites if you're in lowland coastal areas. Again, uh, we are not, uh, there, there's, a, there's a myth that Guam um, is safe, you know, from tsunamis, but, you know, um, uh, we've actually had scientific data provided to us that shows that we are not, um, uh, we actually are vulnerable to tsunami. So mm -hmm. um, we ask that folks take that into consideration when they participate in the drill. Okay. Of course, and the three key components right now are? The duck, duck. cover, and hold. Okay. Correct. okay. Drop, cover, and hold. Drop, cover, okay. Yeah, <laughs> it was duck when our time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that's kind of interesting because the hold on part, you know, like um, I was fortunate enough when you guys had your um, static display down at the Gandhi Heights, or the Gannon Shopping Center, Correct. I should say, a few weeks ago. You know, like I was there and, you know, we uh, helped a lot of folks out, showed some interesting displays and everything sure. and really got the word out about it. Uh, the hold on aspect is interesting because, you know, like people think that when there's a earthquake, you know, they go running for the nearest, um, the nearest doorway or something like that. They just stand underneath and everything. The part that you actually get underneath a desk or a table and actually stay put is really key. Correct. But the whole part is to make sure that that desk or table that you're seeking uh, protection under doesn't move from you or, or you don't move from, from it if the shaking becomes pretty violent. Okay. So, yeah. Um, we were talking in the schools, you know, the past uh, couple of weeks promoting the program, and it, it's not just a, the, the, the drop cover and hold and, uh, um, to the desk or the chairs and, and ensure it's secured, but uh, doing some steps prior to the, the earthquake and identifying what we call safety spots. Mm -hmm. And safety spots, you know, are the places that you can go um, you know, in case of an earthquake, like the desk or uh, the side of a wall where there's, uh, there's no uh, objects that can possibly uh, fall down and cause some damage. Um, or if you're in op uh, outside in open areas away from trees or, you know, uh, poles, you know, and, or, or electrical lines, things of that nature. So um, we encourage them to not only find the safety spots in and around their school, but at their homes. And, you know, if they go and, and to practice when they go out to the mall, if they're going to, you know, um, uh, um, participate in some type of activity, mm -hmm. you know, center court, you know, or go to a restaurant, they're going to be there for a prolonged uh, period of time. Where are the safety spots that so they can go if an if earthquake was to occur? Mm -hmm. Now, it's, it seems kind of trivial because it's like, okay, well, you know, like if, if an earthquake did occur and everything, you know, like it would be pretty simple. But in talking to a lot of people, a lot of people didn't realize that's really how simple it is. And, you know, you can get your kids involved in it. And, you know, it's, it's a family activity. The parents can say, okay, let, let's go practice and let's map out, you know, like what our evacuation plan yeah. is and everything, just, it, just so we know. Exactly. And it's more than just mapping that out. I mean, you know, one of the things that we, we stress to folks that, you know, our audience when we do uh, outreach is, it's not just preparing um, yeah, or identifying these spots, but preparing, you know, your workstation, your home or, or your business. Uh, because if you don't mitigate, uh, say, for example, this vase that's on top of this, you know, this uh, table, if it's towards the corner and it's not secured, mm -hmm. if an earth earthquake was to occur, it'd obviously fall over, the glass would shatter, making a loud noise. And if there's other objects in the room, um, and they all start doing it at the same time, and people are unsure what, make, what causes earthquakes, then the uh, anxiety levels go up. And unfortunately, you know, people, uh, some people, most people can't control their emotions. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's hard to control a, a, a mass amount of folks in that type of event. So we, we try and tell folks, you know, uh, you know, do take mitigation uh, efforts, you know, and trying to ensure that, you know, there's no um, uh, damage sustained during an earthquake or we're actually reducing them. Um, the number one cause of injuries is from falling objects. So we want to, again, make sure that, you know, when you, when you identify your safety spots or you prepare for the drill or the reward event, that you do that not just, again, in, in your school, your workplace, but at your home as well. Okay. Okay. So, Chuck, I know you and your staff are all going to be involved on October 20th at 1020 in the morning. So are we here in Harmon. Everybody's going to be doing it. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Thanks okay. for having us. All right. And everybody, make sure you do the Great Guam Shakeout. That happens on October 20th at 1020 in the morning. Remember, duck cover and hold on. Really, really simple to do.